So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Decarbonize Youth Empowerment and Knowledge Stream of the CBA 15 conference. We're very excited to be able to present um, some of our, our work that we've been doing as a part of Decarbonize. This is last year's project. Decarbonize itself is, um, is an ongoing project that, that is handed off from year to year. And this is our 2020 team that put together an amazing paper. They're going to talk more about the structure and, and how it all works um, and how they came to this paper in a few minutes here. But I want to Welcome all of our students who are joining us today to really talk about what does it what is meaningful youth engagement in in both global citizenship and the SDGs, focusing specifically on this project through the lens of climate change. But what does it mean to um, to really be engaging in this work? And how do you meaningfully engage youth? And so we have lots of organizations that are joining us today that do work around um, gender and to, who do work around um and intergenerational mentorship and and these youth here that are here with their own voice and their own perspective are um going to tell you how to engage them and how to engage them meaningfully so it's not just um a casual conversation it's not just maybe a pizza night where you bring them in listen and then they they leave but how do you engage in enriched and deep dialogue and learning and exchange and growth and action all that amazing stuff so we're so excited to welcome you Decarbonize is um, Decarbonize is a, a project that we've been running for about 10 years now um, in partnership with Taking It Global. Taking It Global is their parent charity. It's a nonprofit based in Canada that runs off under the Global Youth Action Network throughout the United States as a registered charity there as well. Um, we received the official patronage of UNESCO for our 2019 and 2020 projects, and we're reaching out again for that for our 2021 ahead of COP26, but received the official patronage already from the Canadian Commission for UNESCO. UNESCO is a and the ASP.NET schools are, are an integral part of our Decarbonize project. And this year, um, Decarbonize is sponsored through um, a generous grant from the Trottier Foundation. So we want to acknowledge them and their support of global youth action. So Decarbonize has been running, as I said, for about 10 years in different sort of capacities. We started very small where we just did connections to some of our staff members who were attending the UNFCCC conference. Um, and, and at the time, I believe it was in Peru, and we were just doing um, interviews on the ground. And then so some of the youth were like, well, why, why aren't we there? Like, why aren't we at the conference? Why are we just zooming into it? And I was like, well, yeah, why aren't you there? Where are all the under 18 youth? Where are any youth in this conference? And so we really started working alongside the UNFCCC to say, Where's the voice of, of youth in all of this? We're, we're looking at um, inclusivity is, is the key foundation to UN. And so how are our youth being represented at this? And at the time they were like, well, we can't bring in under Indian youth. That it's, it's actually against our, our policies to have youth on site. And that seemed a little crazy to us. And so we, we pushed it further and we challenged them and we, and we worked with them to shift away from that policy. And so we have been working closer and closer with UNFCCC and other UN organizations to really engage youth at a primary level within the context of these conversations. So not that youth will be expected to engage in negotiations or come with, up with um, novel carbon capture systems, but that youth have a role in their unique perspectives, their unique positions, their um, centrality to education systems that they can really advise and contribute in these systems. And so their voice at the table is important. And so we've been working to, to help uh, facilitate that for, for quite a few years. And really, um, this is one of the COVID has been, we have always been virtual. But COVID has been an added level of complexity and then often, uh, as, as the students will explain in a few minutes here, we, we take the students to the conference. And last year we had to 
bring the the or this earlier this year we had to bring the decision makers to the kids um, as a part of their presentation so this the presentation they're about to see was given to the director of mitigation for the UNFCCC along with a lot of other partners um, both UNICEF the UN Youth Envoy um, and and many other organizations that that came to uh, UNESCO ESD chief and uh, various sort of lead negotiators for for Canada and other countries that attended and brought the, the youth to them and them to the youth in, in a virtual capacity. But we're really excited to be able to share what they presented and what they thought and their passion with you as we move towards a conversation later about what is meaningful youth engagement in, in, in education and in sustainable development goals and, and global citizenship really mean and how can you do it? And they're here to answer your questions. So welcome everyone. We're so looking forward to, to sharing this. I'm going to turn it over now to our wonderful, brilliant students and have them uh, really take it from here. Over to you, Matthias and Marie. Hi everyone, my name is Matthias and I am a junior year high school. Hey guys, my name is Marina and I'm a freshman high school. And today we're going to present you guys what that we're doing that uh, we would like to briefly share the journey that we in the carbonize have gone through in the last eight months. So, okay. Uh, we study in College Magno, a Brazilian school in the city of São Paulo. Uh, Brazil is a large country with a big population that uses a lot of energy. Our main power source is hydroelectric, which is often complemented by thermoelectric energy. Okay. Mm, in our presentation today, you see a sample of some of the research and work of the youth of the world regarding climate issues. Decarbonize is the largest synthesis of youth under 18 research and action on climate change. Ahead of COP26, we are mobilizing to combat the repercussions of our changing environment. We, the youth you see presenting before today, are only a minuscule fraction of the students put effort in the carbonize. It began with entire schools and communities participating in arts, surveys, projects, and global video conferences. What's amazing about the carbonize is that it doesn't end with us, but it's a continuous cycle of interactional and learning that leads to local and global change. This launches in April on Earth Day with individual local projects. The Carbonize moves into the classroom into September, and in December, all of the work is condensed into the com comprehensive Global Youth Report. Alanoa is a traditional word used in Fiji and are quasi Pacific, reflecting a process of inclusive dialogue. The purpose of Talanoa is to share stories, build empathy, and make wise decisions for the collective good. Talanoa procedures involve the sharing of ideas, skills, and experience through storytelling. During the process, we build trust and advance knowledge through empathy and understanding. Blaming others and making critical observations are inconsistent with the building mutual trust and respect, and therefore inconsistent with the Talanoa concept. Talanoa fosters, fosters stability and inclusiveness in dialogue, creating a safe space that embraces mutual respect on a platform of decision making for a greater good. Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Gabriel Valin. Uh, this is, and this is my first year on the project, but I'm here today to answer to you all, uh, who are we? So first of all, I also study in Colegio Magnum, and I think our school fits pretty well in our project as, is, as it has a numerous sustainability projects like solar energy and organic matter reuse. Uh, as for the decarbonized project, who are we? I must anticipate you that this is not a simple question to be answered. Well, we are really different from each other. We are thousands of youth, youth from 43 countries and all of six continents of the world. We have different culture, habits, but what makes us one huge group is the purpose we all we are all gathered here for, inspiring the leaders of the world to take action on the climate crisis we face. 
Technic Global and the Center for Global Education in partnership with OceanWise, Stratier Foundation, and under, and under the moral partnership of UNESCO, provided us the opportunity to represent other youth demanding wide changes from those who hold international recognition. With past projects, we were able to get a diverse perspective, collect arts and surveys of students from associated schools around the globe. Hours and hours of online collaboration allowed us to put out to put our ideas into paper and now expose what we all believe could culminate into a better future. With that being said, answering the formal question, we are decolonize and decarbonize. Hello, our names are Ana Maria Vera and Andrea Yepes. We go to Gimnasio Los Cabos in Bogota, Colombia, and we are going to talk a little bit about our process during this project. Um, okay, so our process uh, starts with our journey as a school. So the first uh, step we took was to be in our elective that is called PRI, and that it's like the ecological project of the school. And after we chose the PRI, we were already involved in COP26. And we, when we, when we were in PRI, we needed to design a small project uh, for our school. And the students must think of uh, different ideas and must plan plan different ideas um, that could help like with ecological um, like with ecological objectives uh, and after this we we should present our ideas or our projects uh, so the school can approve it and we could start start implementing these ideas in our school Uh, after after we had like this introduction of our journey as a school, um, we went to the first activity of decarbonize decolonize that were some introduction videos uh, in an online car uh, classroom. Um, decarbonize has like different activities from September to December that we had to do, and in the first activity were some introduction uh, videos where we had to share like information about ourselves. Uh, information about our, our, our schools, our communities, and what which impacts do we see the most in our country. So here are some examples of the videos that we that all of us published. Uh, after this, uh, the next activity we did was calculating our carbon footprints in our, our home, uh, like personally, and also in our schools. Uh, so we, according to that, um, carbon footprints, we just uh, wrote some blogs that talk about our learning uh, in this whole process uh, of calculating our carbon footprints. And we we read other people's blogs, like uh, blogs from other countries, so we could understand more the use of energy, our own use of energy compared to the other countries' use of energy. Uh, so in here is an example of our blog. Um, in there we we basically mentioned uh, our carbon footprint and our school carbon footprints, and we made also an analysis of of all the information so we could put it uh, clearly in the text, and also other students uh, answer to our thoughts, ideas, and our concerns. Um, like it is shown in here, it is one comment. So we find really interesting that other people like take took the time to analyze and give us feedback our our carbon footprint our us like us as cool like other people just read it and this is another example that is costa rica's carbon footprint and it is interesting also that we had to answer one some questions some specific questions and one of those questions was a hey, how does your carbon footprint reflect the economy status locations and politics in your country and it is an interesting thing uh, to think about uh, not just the carbon footprint as an environmental issue just uh, to include all the politics and economic things uh, in the way to see the carbon footprint in here are also some comments of a uh, Costa Rica's carbon footprint. After we calculate the carbon footprint, we had some bilateral conversations for the month of October, and we work with a partner school uh, to share some study cases around climate change. Um, so we um, we did some research and we learned about an issue in our country ourselves, and then we taught it to the to the other countries, uh, like the other countries' partners, 
and, and we also learned about other countries' targets under the Paris Agreement and how we were doing like um, all of our efforts to reach the the targets of the Paris Agreement. And also all the countries were paired with a global north and a global south partner. Um, so for example, we uh, in Colombia were paired with Russia, uh, Canada was paired with Ghana and Japan was paired with India. So every country had at least one partner. Then we worked on the continental meetings where we had discussions about the 2020 importance because it was the fifth year since the Paris Agreement. Um, this year, it was when the countries must revolve their national determined contributions, and they also must update them with more ambitious targets, such as implementing re renewable energies and working on education on their education system related to climate change. In this meeting, we also shared the current NDCs and the status of each one of them in our countries. Finally, we talked about the responsibilities of our countries versus other countries' responsibilities regarding climate change. Then in the global meetings, a in this ones, we focused on answering 10 individual main questions on, on rewards of climate change. We use the questions and the answers to write 10 different essays by groups developing them of each, developing each question. After the essays, we um, were done in some way and we made different rounds to go. We call a, um, we made feedback to those essays and the same way we complete the ideas of others. Here we have some pictures of the past years. Then we worked on the global art gallery, Artists for Change, where hundreds of pieces of art were submitted. Uh, here people were able to express themselves and show to the world how they feel about climate change. And there were pieces from children as young as four. Here we have some pictures of the work we had. And the final thing we did was the global uh, led writing, where from December the 11th to the 13th, 103 students representing 26 countries and six continents worked online for 96 hours. Finally, between January and February, 16 global lead youth refined the final report. Hello, everybody. My name is Raquel, and I am from Alajuela, Costa Rica. I study at Simple High School, and I'm going to speak a little bit about action. So I think that one of the most important questions when it comes to this subject is how do we turn learning into action? And our answer to that is doing what we can with what we have. It can be big or small, but it is crucial to show our concern about the current climate issue to the world. These things can be as simple as changing our daily life choices, for the better, of course, to big things like participating in projects like Decarbonize. But what are some examples of action that we have done? Well, in Brazil, Decarbonize Youth started a project to plant native trees from the Atlantic forest in a square next to their school to fight against deforestation. In Greece, Decarbonize students organized a shoreline cleanup on a beach in Crete. In India, decarbonized students work with their school to install solar panels. In Madagascar, the decarbonized students had a biodigester built at their school and now spend time every Monday talking to other students about climate change and environmental awareness. And in Costa Rica, we had a green week in which we started a vegetable garden and we also wrote blogs online about sustainability. And of course, there are many other examples, but sadly we can fit them all but it is incredible to see how youth have taken this knowledge and put it into action according to their country's own climate issue. 
Hi, my name is Nyla and I'm a 14 year old who's been involved with this project for just over three years. Unfortunately, Maya, one of my fellow Decarbon students, is not able to be here today. Uh, Maya is a 16 year old Polish student from Katowice and the Decarbonist project has allowed us all to meet, to collaborate and learn from youth from all over the world and expand our horizons on topics that are underneath the climate crisis. One of the topics is meaningful participation. Meaningful youth participation is vital for the world because every citizen disregarding their age, skin colour, gender or religion has to be reached and equally encouraged and have the same possibilities to undertake the climate actions. The concept of meaningful participation is more than simply being educated about basic science behind climate change. In order to achieve the meaningful participation, the youth needs to be provided with full, science-based, culturally integrated, age-appropriate information. And during the course of studying, the necessity is to implement project-based and experiential learning, which would result in socially active youth members. In reality, the small steps on the everyday level lead to significant action. Meaningful participation starts when young people are encouraged to initiate ideas and activities that are relevant to their lives and to draw on the knowledge, skills and abilities that they have retained. In order for our actions to work and to mitigate the climate crisis, everyone has to be held accountable because the biggest threat to climate change and everyone is that everybody has to be held accountable. Advocacy is not meeting our commitments and targets, but it's making sure that all citizens should be held accountable and have a right and possibility to participate as stakeholders on matters which are going to impact our lives. That's what should be understood as meaningful participation. Hello, my name is Ian Bingo. Through an Empathy Nations Academy, through the government taking accountability and noticing climate change as more than a passing phase, a better connection with the youth can be created through mutual interest. Unfortunately, us youth often have our ideas and abilities disregarded. Our voices need to be amplified and creating these connections with the youth can do so, can make them heard, can inspire more youth, can encourage governmental bodies to work more towards ending the climate emergency. As with any endeavor, however, start small. Local action is often overlooked for being too diminutive of a change to make, when in reality, it shapes communities and societies to adapt with the faith that is the future. Local leaders should understand that environmental issues are just as important as the economic and financial challenges, especially as the, environment, or as the environmental ones grow unquestionably and to work. It may be difficult to shift focus, but it can be done when an understanding that actions performed now that are small will support people globally. The future starts right now, doesn't it? The government has the capability to combat climate change. Undoubt undoubtedly, it should take interest in doing so. By meeting global goals and standards as a motive and creating a firm and committed interest in environmental issues, governments could easily achieve this. Primarily, taking these interests to heart directly can have a grand influence on the way society and the youth view climate change. This can be done at governmental facilities, such as schools, or through businesses that the government can influence, such as the fossil fuel industry. Listening to youth and promoting advocacy raises awareness. In the end, all these initiatives have an immediate effect of slowing the effects of climate change. How about the solutions? The idea of listening to people comes in again once more. New ideas and techniques are out there waiting to be heard, and the government has the ability to raise them and help create solutions. Ultimately, all these actions link to the government and they can only be exploited by establishing a stable, steady, and wrapped governmental interest. Um, hello, my name is Laís. Hi, I am Isabel. Uh, and we are from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we are in sophomore high school. And also we are working with Anisa from Bangladesh, but she couldn't be here today. Uh, and we are going to talk about the role of education in fighting the climate change. So on the left side, there are some photos of Anisa's school and her friends. And on the right side, there are some photos of our school and our group. So, 
cage is the most powerful tool in fighting climate change. Learning about the environment would be the first step in protecting it. On the other hand, ignorance leads to climate anxiety and climate denial. This anxiety takes the form of distress during natural disasters or feeling helpless about not being able to save the earth. This ignorance also leads to individuals living in denial of climate change. People who refuse to believe it is a real phenomenon or that it is a current ongoing crisis. All these mis misconceptions and fears can be broken through the spirit of education. People can know how to save themselves and their environment during disasters and teach others how to reduce the carbon footprint. People will now have added reasons to fight climate change by doing Part. So, how do we have to educate? The short answer is everyone with other emphasis on these specific people because they have the most power to fight against the global crisis. Furthermore, the knowledge acquired must also be passed on so that everyone can enjoy the learning. Um, so there are plenty of ways you can use to follow uh, the educate, follow to educate people, and we have to use we have to use all of them. So the accessibility of campaigns has to be used to reach most people we can and to instigate conversations. Uh, through discourse, people can learn from one another, but in this case, the habit of fact checking fact checking has to be practiced. Offline campaigns. Uh, has uh, can steer up huge support for the cause. And if magazines, newspapers, and other information outlets cover it, these essential topics, people from different groups with different perspectives could learn the truth about the global warming. The hands in action topic will be to put in practice what you have learned about the carbon, carbon minimum life. And also, if you see any people doing things that you, are, that you know aren't good for the environment, you can teach them what you learned and tell them what is the right thing to do. So as we let the people know all those things, meaningful, meaningful and effective participation and commitment should be the goal for us to have in our mind. So that is for the role of education in the fighting of climate change. Role of youth. Let's just start by um, just hearing a little bit more about me, this, my school, and the participation I have in the Decarbonize project. So I collaborated with multiple youth to write and present this section, and I am, as I mentioned, an upcoming high schooler, however I'm representing my previous school, Bullish Charter School in Los Altos, and we represent both California and the United States. Our school focuses on how each community is affected by the climate crisis, taking decarbonized initiatives through educating our community finding solutions and transitioning that to our global knowledge. Our school instills the importance of protecting the environment from a young age, such as our continued work with the Leatherback Sea Trust involving the Leatherback Trust and a community in Costa Rica. So the role of youth, youth supporting youth. As youth, we need to come together and support each other in our efforts to impact climate targets. We need global platforms and networks to celebrate the work we are doing so that other students can read, learn, ask questions, and be inspired to instigate change in their own homes, schools, and cities. Not only do we need the tools to become inspired, but we need the support from leaders of the world in order to provide and implement sustainable solutions. Role models, this draws on what I just mentioned, because being a role model is acknowledging and championing the work that other youth are doing in their country. Young people should grow up knowing that their voices matter, that they can make a change now. By showing other youth that they are not alone in this fight, we can inspire climate action and encourage positive change. But finally, youth action. 
Being role models means taking action to help others see the change they need to become. Some actionable steps we hold ourselves accountable to are participating in strikes, like you saw in the picture, and protests, using our voices and perspectives in policy and implementing lifestyle changes. Youth must be provided with a sturdy platform and positions where we can actually instigate meaningful change, which usually only comes from the positions of power that our global leaders hold. All right, call to action now. Unfortunately, Sneha is unable to join us today because she has a huge exam. And so I, she's asked that if I can quickly step in and present her slides. So Sneha is from Lacombe Composite High School in Alberta, Canada. And her school started a garden project this year to reclaim unused land nearby. Um, her section, she's talking about the overall, overall, what have they learned? So they have, she knows that, that youth have the right to participate as equal stakeholders on matters which impact their lives. That we need youth to be invited into programs and projects where we can make our voices heard. In an absence of government leadership, our institutions need to step up and amplify voices and actions for change. The leaders of today must inspire the people of tomorrow, tomorrow leading by example. As youth, we rely on adults to make decisions. If the people responsible for the well-being of our earth are making uneducated decisions, what does that tell the young people who look up to them? Education systems have the power to tackle our lack of awareness regarding climate change. By educating more global citizens, we can ensure that all youth have the ability to spark conversations and ignite change. Ultimately, it is the responsibility of each country's government to educate its people on the environmental crisis. We, as youth, often do not have the financial or structural means to initiate our own solutions. We need other stakeholders to come beside us and provide tangible methods to reach these goals and pave the way for us to express our views. Support from governments and institutions has been invaluable in what we have already done, and we want to continue creating change together. We believe that with passion for long-term transformation and legislation, the power to fight our environment and active leadership to move us forward, we're making the earth a better place no longer just be a slogan, but truth that we live every day. And so Neha would also like to thank everyone who took the time to join us today in Zoom or, or later watching the recording, especially uh, those that reaching out to those who invited us to present at this conference um, and, and make us feel as though we were honored guests and that our voice really mattered. We appreciate the time that everyone has taken out of their day or night to, to attend this event. And thank you all uh, as well to all the educators and organizers out there encouraging and supporting youth to take action. We could not do it without you. Yeah, I could not echo that enough um, that, that not only could the youth not do this without um, the help of, of those around, but as an organization, we could not do that um, without the, the champion and, and those who are working alongside us to, to help make these projects happen. So I wanna say thank you first to all of our youth presenters <laughs> on another amazing presentation. Um, I want to open, um, well, we still have some more, I saw that a few people were, were not able to stay for the whole thing, but I would love those who are in the room um, who listened, if they had any comments or questions for our youth, um, that would be amazing. I'll open up the floor and you're, you're welcome to just unmute, or if you'd like, you can type your questions in the chat if you're worried about your audio or your video. Um, I see here that JV has put in a, a little bit. Would you like to unmute and, and tell us a bit about what you wrote here, JV? We would love to hear from you. Yeah, after listening to so many uh, angels of uh, uh, climate resilient lifestyle. I become very young now. <laughs> I'm now 64 years, but I become so young after listening to all of you. Thank God I had uh, in my teens knew about the climate change. So that is the advantage you have. And uh, we have done uh, something like this uh, for years now. Uh, I want to conclude by saying that please visit the website. What we have done is uh, very recently we concluded one model based on the UNESCO, UNEP International Environmental Education uh, 1977 guidelines, which uh, specifies uh, if you give an individual or a community awareness, attitude, skill, 
knowledge and participation, they will be able to live through the difficulties. I want to repeat, the objectives of environmental education as per UNESCO, UNEP, International Environmental Education Program, 1977, TBC Conference, is an individual or a community. If they are given awareness, attitude, skill, knowledge, and opportunity for participation, they will be able to enable themselves for caring for their environment. So I want to stop at this by saying that we have done about four education models like this. One model was recognized by Arthur Network 2000 as one of the best 20 eco guides. And I'm so happy all of you are doing such wonderful. I want to wish them all the best, all the best, all the best. Look forward to learn more of your experience. Thank you very much. Thanks, JV. That's great to share and, and to hear more about other programs that are going on in and around the world, so especially within sort of an eco school model or the UNESCO model. Many of our, our students, I, I, Raquel, I believe you are a UNESCO school. I know that our Canadian schools, UNESCO school of the 45 um, or the 43 countries last year and the 45 this oh, year, I'd say nice. about 26 are UNESCO ASP net schools. So just over half. Um, which is and, and, and one more thing, uh, yeah. uh, Saraha, let me uh, conclude by saying that an important statement, science and culture, if they hinge, it is the future. Culture and science, if there is some hinge between the two, for example, we segregate wasted source, we save water, one drop a second is 10,000 liters a year, which is equivalent to two kgs of rice, like this. 100 kg of wet waste, if it is segregated in India, it will become 30 kg of compost without doing anything in 40 days. Mm -hmm. This is what, for example, medicinal plants in the tropicals is very common. You see, if you take medicinal plants, you can get very good immunity. Mm. I want to stop at this because, <laughs> because you are in a, in, in a totally enriched experience sharing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, JV. Now, I know we have another participant here from Pakistan. Uh, Zainab, would you like to, to ask our students anything or, or have any comments? Hi, yeah, Sarah. Hello, everyone. So it's, oh. I, I was really moved and really inspired by seeing all these young people talking really well and sharing information about their project. So kudos to you all and congratulations to you all. And Sarah, you are doing really amazing work. So I am basically a part of the official youth constituency of UNFCCC uh, called as Yongo. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are part of it. Uh, but maybe I'll drop its link somewhere in a Slack uh, mm -hmm. so that you can also join there and share your experiences. Maybe uh, these young people could have like more exposure to what is being uh, done in the UNFCCC and they, they might get a chance to, uh, to you know, maybe participate uh, while representing their country and while representing their projects over there. And mm -hmm. yeah, congratulations to you all. You all are doing really amazing work. Thanks so much, Zineb. Yeah, we, we will be traveling well. I mean, obviously COVID is, is on everyone's minds, but we have been, um, as uh, associate members of UNFCCC, we've been invited to, to go to Scotland to, um, to attend COP26 there in Glasgow, hopefully this fall, um, that is the plan. And so we will take one youth from each of our representative nations. So about 45 to 50 kids will, will end up coming over to Scotland to uh, participate both um, in, in COP itself, but then throughout the city, um, sort of going to different schools and meeting other youth groups and, and speaking that way. We Unfortunately, we won't be able to attend COI just because of the dates. It's hard to get people because it's uh, October 28th to, to the 12th. It's hard to get people to, to Scotland for that long of a time. Um, but we will be there that second week of COP, so later in. Um, but I mean, there's always, we have attended Koi in the past and have had a great relationship with Yuango and, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. Good luck for that. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Now, I wanted to ask the, the youth before we, we have a few more minutes here before we need to wrap up for the morning, but I just wondered, like, if any of the students, I know some of them are new, They've, they saw their fellow classmates um, give presentations uh, and, and participate in Decarbonize over the years. So they might not be able to answer this, but for those, maybe Raquel or, or um, Ian or Nyla or, or any of our, Anna, any of our returning students, like what has Decarbonize meant to you in terms of uh, what, what you're doing in school or where you hope to go post school or how has it impacted your life, do you think? Well, in my case, I think it has been extremely inspiring. I sometimes feel lost with what to do because I feel like I'm just a person. I, I, there's not much I can do. But after seeing, like, for example, Nyla, like her, her webinars, I think they're so cool. And I don't know, I just feel really motivated. And it has, it has been a very, part, a very huge part of my life ever since last year. And it has it has made me grow as a person overall. I love it. Awesome. Thanks, Raquel. And I saw you raised your hand as well. Um yeah, uh, well I, I don't know. I think that this is a great experience. Um I was al always like really interested in all these things like caring about the environment because it's something that all of us should do and must do. Um but I think that uh, when we do that, uh, sometimes like I get demotivated because it's like, I'm not doing anything. And mm -hmm. with decarbonized, decolonized, I think that I feel that I'm doing is like a, a great impact. Like we are really a, doing a change in the world. And I think that's that's really important. And also we can learn so much, a, like not just from the research of our country's issues, but also like when we, like we have, we have a lot of different things we learn from other countries and how do they manage their things like we we understand that there is not just our country and that oh, not all the countries may use like not all the countries uh, have the same way uh, to care the environment than our country and there are better countries and there are countries that can learn something from us we can learn something from other countries and I think that's really interesting and those are great um, learnings. Awesome. All right, I guess my, my next question would be, uh, most of the organizations and, the, and adults or individuals who are watching, and we'll watch this later, um, are wondering how do they get youth engaged? You know, that there's um, so many, it seems like, you know, like it, there's so much need for youth voice, but how do they reach youth? Like, how do they, how do they get to you? in order to, to become, to get you interested, to have you participate? What's the, how do they inspire you to join them in the work that they're doing? What do you think? I like, go ahead. I could probably start with this. Um, the most obvious thing is to give us the opportunity to speak because I think throughout history, especially with our age group, there's always this thing of how we need freedom. You know, it's a really big thing, like a stereotype that teens like, really want to like push past the rules and everything and it's true to an extent because we have opinions and we have beliefs and by making us essential partners or like give us a seat at the table we're able to then share our views and feel seen in like mm -hmm. a different way than it would be if you just emailed us saying hey what are your opinions and it's always really important especially when we were talking about like meaningful participation it's about acknowledging that we have opinions and that we have something to give to this issue. And instead of separating the youth climate action movement from the um, global governmental climate action movement, by uniting them, we can probably bring something better to the picture. Does anyone else that wanna, wanna talk about engaging youth? inspiring action. Oh, no worries. All right, so I have put the website for the Decarbonize Project into the link here into the chat. 
Um, we would love anyone who's interested in reaching out who'd like to work with these youth or youth like them who will be coming into the project um, this coming year. Uh, we would love to, to collaborate, especially ahead of COP26 as we travel either virtually or in person to Scotland uh, to take their message and around this learning, but we also do learning and engagement in other areas. So this is a project that we focus on climate change, but we also have projects that focus on, well, I mean, related and, and interlinked is biodiversity, but then we also have refugee projects. We have all sorts of ongoing and, and our uh, the Center for Global Education itself has um, uh, meetings and interactions and activities and, and connects kids around the world about the people, places, topics they're learning about um, in their classrooms from kindergarten to grade 12. And so we're always um, engaging in these sorts of how do we build knowledge and enrich dialogues um, around topics, but that really infuse it with that idea of who am I and what are my responsibilities in relation to this? So I know we had a we had a video conference just earlier in February for International Polar Day, uh, Polar Bear Day, and uh, joined grade two classrooms around the world. And um, we had a, a class from India and a class from Canada and a class from Brazil and a, and we had all these different or Peru and. Um, all these little amazing kids who were just fascinated watching the path. Uh, we were on the, the polar bear buggy up in Churchill, Manitoba, watching polar bears and looking at the cubs and um, and really sort of we're learning about polar bears. But but the key was, what is my responsibility as a Canadian? And how does that change if I'm in, even as, as a grade tour? How, what can I do versus what someone in India can do? And yet, how can we work together with this shared love of polar bears to really uh, work on conservation and work on climate and work on all those things. So I don't think it matters what your age, you can always grow by having an idea of the global context and about how our responsibility shifts in relation to where we are and the, the opportunities we have and the privileges and, and all those sorts of dynamics. I feel so lucky and privileged to work with all of these youth from around the world who, as you can tell, speak amazingly well about their thoughts, their ideas, their passions, their drive, and their calls to action for us to, to, to listen to them and, and uh, react in, in accordance to their needs. And so I wanna thank all of my students who joined me today and who worked so tirelessly in December for those like 96 crazy wackadoodle hours that we were up and writing these paper, this uh, report together. The report itself, you can find its full version on the website that decarbonize.me in the chat. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free. Like my contact information is all over that website. We are always looking for new schools or always looking for new students or always looking for youth and teachers and, and leaders who would like to join us. So please reach out there. Uh, we're all over Twitter and Instagram and all that as well. Um, so we have lots of ways. There's no, no reason why you shouldn't be able to find us and ask a question. Now, I would love if there's any last words of wisdom that any of our students want to pass along to our guests here today who have joined us. I'll open the floor. Anyone, anyone want to say? No, you're all good. Uh, yeah, you've done your part. You worked hard. <laughs> but thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you to my student presenters. You did amazing as always. And it's been a pleasure to share this hour with you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank Bye. 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 Great job, everyone. Thank you for the great presentation. Bye. 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 Bye.